Welcome to Organic Chemistry Premium course. In the previous video, I discussed about the introduction of the stereochemistry of organic compounds and in this video, I will talk about the symmetry, symmetry elements, point group and I will introduce you to the chirality. So let's start our today's topic. So what is symmetry? Symmetry is a very important topic if you consider any part of science, whether it is chemistry, physics or anything. So uh, to have a proper idea about symmetry and symmetry elements is very important, right? So uh, I want to begin the video by uh, introducing you to this very simple molecule which you all familiar with is this BF3. So this is BF3 molecule and if you watched the previous video, you know this is the flying wedge projection formula, right? So I have drawn the BF3 molecule in the flying wedge projection formula and now I want to see whether this molecule is symmetric or not. So what is mean by symmetry? Symmetry is something, uh, so when we call something symmetric that means the molecule has some special property. For example, let us see this is a duster, right? Now this duster has a certain symmetry. What is the symmetry? So if you bisect the duster from here, you will get two equal halves. Or if you rotate this duster like this, if you, you will get the same arrangement. So if this type of properties is there in some molecule, then it is called symmetric. But now let us take something like, uh, so let us say this is a piece of chalk you can see this is broken in such a way that if you rotate the chalk or if you do anything you will not get the same arrangement right so it doesn't have the symmetry anything you consider let's say this is a flower verse and this flower verse is made in such a way that it doesn't have any symmetry if you cut the flower verse through there you will not have symmetry in two sides if you rotate the flower verse then also you will get a different arrangement so whatever you whatever operation you do on this flower verse it will give you a different arrangement and that's why it is not symmetric now let us see what is the case of this bf3 so in this bf3 molecule we imagine a axis through this boron atom like this so this bf3 is bisecting the board so the 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 flying wedge formula of this bf3 is representing so boron atom is here one fluorine atom is on the board one fluorine at atom is above the board and another fluorine atom is below the board or behind the board now we consider a uh, axis which is on the board or which is pa parallel to the board and that is going through the boron atom and if we rotate this bf3 molecule around this axis by 120 degree what we will get we will get so let's say now we give this fluorine one this one two and this one three and we are rotating it by so we are rotating a clockwise rotation like this and also by 120 degrees so what we will get so we will get if 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 and as we have numbered previously so now this fluorine this will be f3 this will be your f1 and this will be your f2 so you can see by this rotation this f1 changed its position and it goes to here this f2 is it goes there and this f3 it goes there but we are we can number the fluorine atom on the piece of paper or on the board but in real life we cannot number the fluorine li like this so if you uh, rotate this BF3 molecule in real situation you will get the same BF3 molecule so the rotation operation this one, eight, 120 degree rotation operation is giving us the same BF3 molecule and that's why this molecule has a symmetry what is this symmetry so this particular operation so this is one of the symmetry operation this rotation is one of the symmetry operation and it is called the simple axis of rotation so it is called simple axis of rotation right now how we can determine uh, what is the order of this rotation so for that we have to divide 360 degree by this angle of rotation that is in this case 120 degree and in this case it is 3 so that's why it is called a c3 axis so this particular axis is called c3 axis and this is how we can determine the 
the uh, degree of rotation or the order of rotation so this is the simple axis of uh, axis of symmetry or simple axis of rotation now uh, this bf3 molecule it has a c3 simple axis of rotation now it is not like that a molecule can only have one simple axis of rotation it can have more than one simple axis of rotation for example if we consider the same bf3 molecule and we consider a axis through this boron and this fluorine atom like this which is again parallel to the board and if you now rotate this by let's say 180 degree so what you will get so in this case you will get so this f3 is in the same position because we are rotating uh, through this axis but now you can see these two fluorine atom will change their position that is f1 will come here and f2 will come there but again we cannot uh, number the fluorine atom in the real life so we get the same bf3 molecule and in this case uh, in this case we we get a, a, a another axis of rotation and this axis of rotation is 360 by 180 so it is actually 2 so this is c2 so this is called a c2 axis and if you look carefully this molecule uh, is not containing only one c2 axis of symmetry but it rather contains three c2 axis of symmetry for, through this ba bond and through this ba bond so it has one c3 axis and three c2 axis right so the point is any molecule which has a principal axis of rotation allow, uh, on the uh, so uh, forget uh, forgive me for that so any any molecule which has a uh, simple axis of rotation it can have more than one simple axis of rotation and now we we, we uh, have a different nomenclature for them for example in this case this three is, uh, is 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 a bigger number than two so that's why this c3 is called principal axis of rotation principal axis of rotation so if any molecule you have more than one uh, uh, simple axis of rotation like cn cm like that so then if n is greater than m so if n is greater than m so this n is called principal axis of rotation what i have written here so a molecule can have only one principal axis of rotation but more than one um, secondary axis of rotation or uh, yeah so in this case this c3 is the principal axis of rotation but this c all the c2s they are the secondary axis of rotation now uh, it is interesting to note that as this molecule has c3 as the principal axis of rotation so it has three c2 axis so it is again a correlative type of thing so if you have uh, so if you have cn as principal uh, axis of rotation and if you find any cm you can uh, you, you can say for sure that you will have n number of cm axis so in this case you have this c3 as the principal axis of rotation so that means you will have three c2 axis so if you find only one c2 axis you can say for sure that it will have another two c2 axis because it, ha it has c3 as the principal axis of rotation so this is about the principal axis of rotation so like bf3 in a other molecules also you can have principal axis of rotation for example uh, let me uh, draw let me draw some more molecules which contain this uh, principal axis of rotation or uh, and the simple axis of rotation so the molecules which we can draw is let's say benzene right so this benzene molecule yeah so this is the structure of the benzene molecule now you can see if we consider a uh, axis like this the chalk uh, which is which is so this benzene ring is on the board and we are considering a axis which is bisecting the board or which is perpendicular to the board so this axis so if you rotate this molecule by uh, 60 degree along this axis so then you will get the same arrangement so in this case this is 360 by 60 sorry so it is actually six so that means it has a c6 axis so in this case the principal axis is axis of rotation is c6 axis now if you consider uh, uh, axis of symmetry through here so again you can see if you rotate it by 180 degree you will get the same arrangement and you can actually have three such kind of symmetry so you get 
3 c2 axis so along with this c6 axis you are getting 3 c2 axis but just uh, recently i have uh, just now i have said that if you have cn as the principal axis and if you find any other cm axis then you will have n number of cm axis so in this case c6 is the principal axis and you found three c2 axis so that means it will have uh, three more c2 axis so where so you can see these are three more c2 axis so if you can find out only one c2 axis you can say for sure that it will have another six uh, c2 axis right so this is about the uh, simple axis of rotation now let us talk about uh, some other uh, type of symmetry elements so the next symmetry element which i am going to talk about is the plane of symmetry so what is the plane of symmetry again we consider the bf3 molecule so this is our bf3 molecule and now let's say we consider a plane we consider a plane through so we consider a plane through this bf bond so this board is actually the plane so let's say this board is the plane and one fluorine atom is above the board and one fluorine atom is behind the board so this plane is such a plane that you can see the this plane bisects the molecule in two equal halves so that means this molecule is having a plane of symmetry and it is called a sigma plane in this case it is a sigma v plane so it is called a sigma plane and if you look carefully you can have three such kind of planes because along each ba bond you can consider one plane so this is another plane and this is another plane so you have three sigma v so this v means vertical why it is called vertical because this vertical is actually vertical with respect to the principal axis of rotation so this is our principal axis of rotation this is our principal axis of, of axis of rotation and all these sigma planes they are parallel to this principal axis of rotation so that's why it is called vertical or sigma v so this is sigma v now if you look carefully this molecule poses another another sigma plane so what is that sigma plane so again so now let us draw the molecule in different way so now i will draw the molecule like this yeah so this represent that the molecule is now on the board of the plane so all this boron this fluorine this fluorine and this fluorine all of the four atoms they are on the board and this board now itself this board itself is a plane of symmetry now in this case you can see the principal axis the c3 axis this axis is perpendicular to the board so the plane is actually perpendicular to the principal axis of symmetry and that's why it is called sigma horizontal or it is horizontal with respect to the principal axis of symmetry so that's why it is called sigma horizontal so the molecule poses two kind of uh, sigma plane one is sigma vertical which is parallel to the principal axis of symmetry and another one is sigma horizontal which is horizontal or which is uh, perpendicular to the principal axis of symmetry so this bf3 molecule contains two type of uh, sigma planes so benzene ring if you consider benzene ring it also has the sigma plane so in this case so if you consider the benzene ring so the plane of the molecule itself is the sigma h and from here from here and from here you can consider three sigma planes and from here 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 you can consider another three sigma planes so here you have total six sigma v so six sigma v and one sigma h so these are the symmetry elements present in the molecule so after finishing the initial discussion i will uh, discuss more examples and i will uh, show you that how uh, these symmetry elements play important role in the molecules right so let us now talk about the the symmetry element or uh, the third symmetry element which is the improper axis of symmetry so the first one the first that, that is the simple axis of rotation that is also called the proper axis of symmetry now there is another symmetry that is called improper axis of symmetry and that is represented by sn so what is sn so in this case let us take this molecule let's say we have this molecule that is uh, you may you, you, you may take simple ethane okay so this is simple ethane you can consider all these are hydrogen 
yeah so now you rotate rotate the whole molecule you rotate the whole molecule by let's say so uh, 60 degree so i am not rotating around the sigma bond but i am rotating the whole molecule so if i rotate the whole molecule by 60 degree what i will get is so i will basically get this thing yeah so all these are hydrogen this yeah so i get this now if i place a mirror plane here so if i place a mirror plane here so what i will see in the mirror is so you can see i will see this in the mirror okay so yeah so this is the mirror image of this thing if you look carefully this is the mirror image of this thing right so what i did i did 60 degree rotation of the whole molecule and then i put a mirror and interestingly you can see i am rotating along this axis right so this is the axis of rotation and this mirror is placed perpendicular to the axis so this is important you cannot place mirror anywhere so if you place let's say mirror here you will not get the thing you have to place the mirror uh, perpendicular to the axis of rotation so in this case the rotational axis i can get by 36 i can divide 360 by 60 so it is 6 so in this case it is called a6 right so it is a called uh, it is called um, uh, secondary axis of symmetry or improper axis of symmetry because only rotation will not give you the same molecule but after rotation you have to place a mirror plane uh, perpendicular to the axis of rotation and that's why it is called improper axis of symmetry so the act rotation is not proper that's why it is called improper you can uh, so the molecule poses a a6 axis you can see this molecule poses a6 axis uh, the same molecule the same molecule if you rotate by 180 degree what you will get so let's say you rotate the molecule by 180 degree uh, then yeah so if you rotate 180 degree you will get uh, this thing right so the same thing you will get as the rotation of 60 degree cause the same thing will be caused you can see and now if you put a mirror plane like this what you will get is you will get this thing yeah so this is the mirror image this is the mirror image of this and these two are the same right so again this 180 degree rotation and this mirror plane so it also call it, it also has, sorry it also has the s2 because if you divide 360 by 180 it will give you two so that means this molecule poses s2 and uh, and uh, this a6 right so this is how you have to determine whether a molecule contains uh, s that is the uh, the symmetry of uh, secondary uh, second order or the improper uh, axis of symmetry or not right now the next symmetry el element which i am going to discuss about is the point of inversion so what is a point of inversion so in very simple word a point of inversion is such a thing that so uh, let's say you have a benzene ring and this is the center of the molecule right and from this center if you go this side and if you if you travel the same distance in the in the behind you will get the same point right so this point and this point they are equivalent similarly if you go this side and if you come uh, behind the same distance you will get the same point because these two are equivalent so if this relation is there that is in a molecule if you consider the center of the molecule and from the center if you go in a certain direction and then you return back and you go the same distance but in the reverse direction and you get the similar point or same point then it is called that the molecule poses the pre, uh, the the point of inversion and it is represented by i so benzene molecule certainly poses i now if i consider the previous example that is the example of ethane so ethane in this case uh, one question is for you tell whether it is so whether it is gauche form or in anti form tell me that right so this is the ethane now in ethane molecule itself if you 
if you consider this is the center of the molecule and if you go this direction you will get hydrogen in the opposite direction if you go you will get again hydrogen similarly if you go this side you will get hydrogen and this side you will get hydrogen similarly if you go this side you will get hydrogen in the opposite side you will go get also hydrogen so this molecule also poses the 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 uh, point of inversion or i so there is a relation between s2 and i and you will see that if a molecule poses s2 it will sure that the molecule is also having i so if a molecule has s2 that is um, this uh, improper axis of rotation s2 then it will also have i so uh, it is evident from this example but we, we will prove it uh, mathematically how we can prove it mathematically this is very interesting yeah so let me draw this coordinate axis so this is the coordinate axis this is the z axis this is the x axis and this is the y axis right so now let us consider a point here which is basically x y z so this is the point p which is represented by x y z now what we will do is we will do a rotation of this point along this z axis so if we do the rotation of this plane along this z axis we will go this side and here we will reach so let's say this is q this is now q so the coordinate of this uh, point will be uh, minus x minus y and z because you can see we are rotating so it uh, uh, from positive x value it will go to the negative x value and again from the positive y value it will go to the negative y value because so actually the rotation is by 180 degree i uh, forget to mention so the rotation is 180 degree so if we do a rotation along this z axis by 180 degree we will get a point q which coordinate will be minus x minus y and z now if we place a mirror along this xy plane so this xy plane we will place a mirror and we will see the reflection of this uh, point so here some somehow, uh, somehow here we will get this point let's say this is p dashed and now the coordinate will be minus x minus y minus z right because we are getting the mirror image of this z so this x minus x and minus y they will be same but as we are taking the mirror image along the x y axis so this z will become minus z so from starting from this p point we get a p dashed point and the coordinate of this p point is x y z whereas the coordinate of this p dash is minus x minus y minus z so this is basically an i operation because in case of i we know from the middle we go in a certain direction and then we go in the reverse direction but the magnitude is same here also the magnitude is same x y z but the direction is different so that's why it is an i operation now we can see by doing this i operation we also did a s2 operation on the molecule because what we did is we do, we did a 180 degree rotation so 180 degree rotation means 360 by 180 that means 2 and then we are keeping the mirror mirror plane but it is again the mirror plane is placed perpendicular to this axis of rotation so that means it is an s2 operation so we can see that the s2 operation and the i operation that leads to the similar conclusion so that's why we say that if a molecule poses i that means the molecule will surely possess the s2 right so uh, keep it in your mind now these are the all symmetry elements uh, which are uh, present in molecules so this is the so the first symmetry element is the proper axis of symmetry uh, which uh, um, uh, they, and there was also this principal axis of rotation and the secondary axis of rotation the second uh, second symmetry element is the uh, symmetry plane one is sigma vertical one is sigma horizontal and the third uh, symmetry element is the improper axis of rotation or sn and the fourth symmetry uh, element is the i or the point of inversion now let us talk about the point group so whatever symmetry element present in a molecule based on that we can divide or classify molecules in certain point groups and there are some rules so what are the rules so rule is very simple if a molecule possesses only c1 axis and nothing else then the point group will be c1 right so very unsymmetric molecule for example this chalk this broken chalk it has no other symmetry than c1 so that means it will fall into the c1 point group now if, if a molecule possesses only 
sigma axis and nothing else then it will be cs the point group will be cs this s stands for the plane of symmetry if a molecule poses cn axis and nothing else then it will fall into the cn point group so these are the point groups so it will fall into cn point group so just write down this for this table in your notebook later uh, it will be helpful for you now if a molecule poses cn axis and then also it contains some sigma planes so the point group will be cnv right so the point group will be cnv if a molecule poses cn axis and sigma horizontal now if a molecule has a sigma horizontal it doesn't matter matter whether it has a sigma vertical or not so it can have sigma vertical um, it can have sigma vertical or it can uh, may not have sigma vertical but the point group will be cnh so if a molecule poses sigma horizontal the point group will be cnh it doesn't matter whether it has a sigma vertical or not right and uh, the last one is if a molecule contains uh, cn and also perpendicular c2 so if along with this c and if as if it has a perpendicular c2 then the point group will be and all uh, will be dn so from cn it change to dn right and in this condition if it contains like uh, sigma h so then it will be dn h if it contains only sigma v then it will be dn d so actually now this sigma v becomes sigma d so we sorry so it will be sigma so it will be sigma d right so what so uh, for now just note down all these uh, things as a table later i will discuss what is mean by that right so uh, now let us talk about a very interesting molecule that is the aline and we will talk about the point group of aline. So this aline is a very important molecule and uh, question comes regarding this. So what is the structure of aline? So aline is CH2 double bond C double bond C CH2. So it is basically called the elongated tetrahedral because if you look at the structure of aline you can see so two of the hydrogen is on the board or parallel to the board and another two are perpendicular to the board see so this will remind you to uh, the structure of methane so in methane two of the hydrogens are on the board and another two are perpendicular to the board so this hydrogen is above the board and this is behind the board similarly these two are on the board this hydrogen is behind the board and this hydrogen is above the board so uh, it is it shows that someone elongated this tetrahedron and we get this so this is the that is why the structure of aline is called elongated tetrahedron now to visualize aline in a more uh, precise way we have to place this aline inside a cube so how we can do it so uh, the visualization will be very clear if we put the aline inside a cube so this is a cube this is a cube and we place aline here right now you place these two hydrogen any of these two corners so this is one hydrogen this is one hydrogen any of the two corner then you have to place the another two hydrogen atoms right and you have to place the another two hydrogen atoms in uh, sorry so i did one uh, yeah you can do it it doesn't matter so so whatever you, you have to do is you have to place the another uh, sorry yeah i did a mistake so you cannot place uh, these two hydrogens in the two sides of this cube we have to place them in uh, two corners so what you have to do is you can do like one hydrogen you can place here but then another hydrogen is you have to place this side so uh, yeah so one thing i have i forgot to draw is this yeah so if you place one hydrogen here another hydrogen you have to place like this side yeah so this side you have to place another hydrogen 
and now what you have to do is other two hydrogens you have to place here and here yeah so this makes a tetrahedron so if you go if you look carefully this makes a tetrahedron uh, my drawing can be more precise I guess so for that what I have to do is I have to erase it little bit yeah so yeah see now it becomes more clear yeah now this is the structure of aline so the aline this was the aline and we put it inside this cube so what we have done is these two and these two right so this is one hydrogen this is another hydrogen and these are all four hydrogens we placed it like this now if you consider a axis of rotation around this so this this is so this is one plane of the cube and this is another plane of the cube and if you consider one axis of rotation which is bisecting the three carbon atoms of the aline and also bisecting these two planes of the board and if you rotate it what you will get so you will get the same arrangement of the molecule right so this hydrogen will go here and this hydrogen will go there similarly this hydrogen will come here and this hydrogen will come there so you will get the same arrangement of the molecule and this rotation is 180 degree so this axis is called c2 axis so the aline poses c2 axis now let us see whether it poses some other symmetry axis or not yeah so for that you can see if you consider a plane along this so top phase and the bottom phase if you consider plane so then also if you rotate by 180 degree you will see this hydrogen will go here this hydrogen will come here and this hydrogen will go here and this hydrogen will come here so the exchange basically so again this is another c2 and uh, similarly if you consider a uh, uh, axis through these two so this side and the behind side of the cube then also you will see if you rotate it by 180 degree this hydrogen will go here and this hydrogen will come here similarly this hydrogen will go there and this hydrogen will come here so another axis of symmetry along this side right so it contains c2 as the principal axis of rotation and another two c2 as the secondary axis of rotation so it has total so one c2 which is the principal axis of rotation another two c2 which are perpendicular to this principal axis of rotation now let us see whether it contains some plane of symmetry or not so interestingly if you see so the plane you can see just by looking at the simple drawing of the aline so this is the simple drawing of the aline yeah this is the simple drawing of the aline and if you consider one plane which is containing these two hydrogen containing these two basically the board if you consider this board as a plane so this this will bisect aline in two halves in one half you will be this hydrogen which is above the plane and in another half this hydrogen which is below the plane so this is one plane of symmetry similarly you can consider another plane which is uh, which is perpendicular to the board so that contains this hydrogen this hydrogen and all these three carbon atoms so that actually bisects these two hydrogen so now in one half you have this hydrogen another half you have to this hydrogen right so it has two sigma v right it has two sigma v now because these two c2 they are perpendicular to the principal uh, axis of symmetry we call this sigma v as sigma d and this is a rule right so this is a rule the rule is when you have uh, the other c2 axis and they are uh, perpendicular to the principal axis of symmetry then the sigma v becomes sigma d so now what will be the point group of aline so the point group of aline will be d to d so this is very important in exams there will be question about the point group of aline and this is the d to d now the interesting thing is if you change one of this hydrogen by let's say chlorine so now uh, all the symmetry element vanishes so you can see 
if you uh, replace this by chlorine then you can see only one symmetry uh, prevails and that is the sigma v so then uh, the plane which is perpendicular to the board that uh, uh, symmetry plane persists because that still bisects this alanine in two equal halves where you have this hydrogen and this hydrogen and actually this is containing this chlorine so that's why the symmetry is retained so then only the sigma uh, sorry i these are sigma v right so these are sigma v so this sigma v still persists right so um, uh, there will be questions like that they will change it and if you change this also so let's say if you change it to fluorine then also this sigma persists so it doesn't ma matter whether you change one atom or two atom until you have these two same you will have a plane of symmetry right so i think uh, i should uh, stop this video here in the next video i will discuss uh, some more examples interesting examples of uh, point groups and uh, some other properties of aline uh, so that's all thank you for watching